Nice. We're talking about L'Hopital's rule today. This is section 4.5 in the textbook. I don't have... Do I have a, a homework up there, Yvonne, for, for L'Hopital's? Do I have a homework up on, on web assign? One more time. No, no, no. I just You have the list open, right? Do, do I have a homework up there for L'Hopital's? Yes? Yeah, homework seven. So homework seven is, is L'Hopital's rule. What we're, we're looking for, let me, let me give you the rule first. We'll do a quick example, and then I'll prove it. We'll do a couple more examples, then we'll take our quiz and get the hell out of here, right? So, so L'Hopital's rule says, uh, if f of x, sorry, if if f of c equals g of c equals zero, then the limit as x goes to c of f of x over g of x equals the limit as x goes to c of f prime of x over g prime of x. So if I get that indeterminate form, yes, you with me? If I get that zero over zero, which is what happened in every single limit we did in, in homework one, right? If I get zero over zero, then I can take the derivative of the numerator, and I'm always gonna do this with shortcuts, Yvonne, just for you, just kidding, it's for everybody. I'm always going to take the derivative of the numerator alone, not a quotient rule for some of you who know the quotient rule already. Take the derivative of the numerator, take the derivative of the denominator, and rinse and repeat. Right? Plug back in, see if you get 0 over 0. If you do, do it over again. Derivative top, derivative of the bottom, rinse and repeat. Take the limit again. Keep doing that until you don't get 0 over 0, and then, then you've got your limit. Now, I'll prove this, okay? I'll prove this today. Do you, are you, do you need to be responsible for the proof? No, but when I'm doing the proof, you should be going, yes, I agree. Yes, I agree. Wait a minute. Oh, okay, yes, I agree, right? And then we, that's how I would like you to approach when, whenever I do a proof in the class, okay? Let's look at an example, okay? So we had a pretty important limit to memorize, and that was the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x over x, right? We already know this limit is what? 1. We've got it memorized. If we don't have it memorized, it's on our midterm formula sheet, or we got the tattoo, right? If you're really that dedicated to mathematics, that you'll get a tattoo. I won't consider it cheating. Just be careful where you put the tattoo. You don't want to have to take clothes off during the middle of a test to see the tattoo, okay? So, if I plug in here, do you agree I get 0 over 0? Sine of 0 over 0 is 0 over 0. So, uh, use the hop. L'Hopital's rule, he's a French mathematician who, who, who paid better mathematicians to come up with theorems. And then he took credit for it. <laughs> He bought him and then put it at, put his own name on him. Real crook. Or rich. He's rich, I guess. I guess that's enough, right? So it looks like hospital, but it's lopey tall. So so once we know we can use lopey tall, I want to indicate that I'm going to take a derivative of the numerator and a derivative of the denominators. There's a bunch of ways I can indicate that I'm going to take a derivative. I can either use the DDX operator or I can use the prime symbol, okay? So this is going to be the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x prime over x prime. And I, yes, I put the parenthesis on there because I'm emphasizing I'm about to take a derivative of what's inside, right? So f of x prime is the same as DDX of f of x, right? That, remember, I think I talked about that operator already. 
that top D is the derivative the downstairs is saying with respect to X. And you'll see we'll be taking derivatives with respect to other variables in, uh, a little bit later. So, so what do I get? What's the derivative of sine? Cosine, right? So notice I'm still writing my limit piece because I'm just changing my functions now. What's the derivative of x? 1. And now I can just plug into cosine, right? I know cos of 0 is 1. And look what I get. I got what I knew I would get. So at this point, you can go back to homework 1 and do those three problems over using L'Hopital's rule. Someone give me one of those. You, I just handed you your homework back, right? Will you give me, uh, give me, uh, what did I ask for, 19? Give me number 19. What's the limit as x goes to what? Negative 4, Negative four of? The numerator is 1 fourth over 1 over x. Oh, no, 1 fourth, and then plus 1 over x, sorry. And then the denominator is 4 plus x. Beautiful. Good. We already know this answer. I think it's negative 1 16th, is it? Um, yeah, negative 1 16th. So we know the answer, but we're going to verify it with L'Hopital's rule. So on your midterm, it's going to say, find this limit using an LCD, and find the limit using L'Hopital's rule. Right? You with me? And of course, you'll get the same answer. And of course, you'll know you have it right because you'll have checked it numerically or graphically. So it looks like the difficult part here is probably the numerator, right? And let me just write it another way so you can see it. I'm doing the limit as x goes to negative 4 of d dx of 1 fourth plus 1 over x. That means take the derivative. That's all it means over d dx of 4 plus x. Yes, this is another example. And I like the word exam in there, you know. So, I, I, by the way, I knew already that this was 0 over 0, right? I'm not going to tell you to use L'Hopital's rule if it doesn't give you a 0 over 0. In fact, you'll also see later, infinity over infinity also allows me to do L'Hopital's rule. So I'm taking the derivative of the top. I mean, it would be nice if I had that derivative of 1 over x memorized, but I doubt you do. But I'm going to do a little side work. Right? If y equals 1 over x, that's x to the minus 1 power. Don't let me go too fast. This is a power rule. I've got an x to a power. So I get y prime is negative 1 times x to the negative 1 minus 1. Remember, we bring down the power as a coefficient, and we, we subtract 1 from the power. So I get y prime is negative 1 x to the minus 2, or better, negative 1 over x squared. So there's my side work, because I'm ready to go back to my limit now. Don't let me go too fast. Please. Uh, Doyen, let me understand. I, I'm not sure I understand that. I'm not sure I understand that. It's something about trig, but if there's no if there's no trig in it, right? Then there's no trig in it. Were you we talking about the first homework? Yes. 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 Yeah, no. I. I. The issue was the uh, notation. That's all. Right. You're talking about the homework. I just handed back to you. Yeah, it was a notation issue. We, we, can, we can look at yours together right after. Okay. Uh, so I'm ready now. Derivative of the top is, is well, what's the derivative of one-fourth, by the way? Zero. Zero. So I, I can ignore that. I get negative one over x squared 
over what? What's the derivative of downstairs? Yeah, zero plus one is one, right? Now I can simplify this, right? I can simplify it. I'd rather you simplify it, but I don't care if you do. Notice what did I do? I took the negative out. Remember constants can come in or out of a limit. And then write one over x squared divided by one is one over x squared. So there's my new limit. And I'm ready to put negative 4 in. Oh, I get, I get positive 1 over 16, right? Yes? No, I get positive 1 over 16. Is that what we got on our homework? Yeah. Oh, yeah, negative. Oh, sorry, negative, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. My teachers used to say they made mistakes on purpose. Just to see if you're paying attention. I'm like, nope. <laughs> really easy. The thing that's going to save you is when you have to do a derivative that's a little bit messy, do it on the, do it si on the side and then go back to the problem, right? And then box it off. A lot of you are handing me homework with crossed outs all over the place. Rewrite it. Damn it. This is a project. This is a million dollar project proposal for uh, Marlboro cigarettes. We're trying to sell cigarettes to teens, you know? Like, don't give it to me with all this coffee stains on it and coughing and cigarette burns. It's got, it should be perfect, right? I should want to frame it. All right, let's see if I can prove L'Hopital's rule. Give me, give me, give me a little bit of leeway here because I didn't. I, I have to, I have to try and memorize, uh, think back on how to prove it. Um. So, so don't start writing yet. I have to think a little bit. If f of c equals g of c equals zero, then. Uh, the limit of f of x over g of x is equal to the limit of f prime of x over g prime of x. Yeah, yeah, I get lazy. So proof. Don't and give me. Don't start writing yet because I don't know if I'm going to do it correctly yet. Oh yeah, I know it. I know it. You can copy. I, I know it now. Let f of c equal g of c equal zero. So I want to I want to force that right. If I'm going to prove that I'm ten feet tall, if I'm ten feet tall, then I could dunk a basketball. You got to let me be ten feet tall, and then I'll show you I could dunk a basketball. If I'm going to prove that if I was a millionaire, I'd be generous. You got to give me the money first, because I don't have it. But if I was a millionaire, I'd be generous. So you give me the million bucks, and then I'll, I'll give you each a little bit. Right? So, so to prove something, we assume the first part is true, and then we show the second part. We've seen that already in our epsilon delta. If I restrict my x's to some delta, I'll prove to you that they stay on the board. Right? So we said, all right. Let the x's be restricted, right? So same thing here. I'm going to let these two functions at c be 0. And I'm going to start uh, with the limit of f prime of x over g prime of x. Well, guess what? I know those limits, right? I know those limits, right? I know the limit of f prime of x is f of x minus f of c over x minus c, that's my, my delta y over my delta x, right? And g prime of x is g of x minus g of c all over x minus c. And that's still a limit, right? Remember, when I'm taking a quotient of limits, right, I can do the limit of the top and limit of the bottom, or I can do the limit of the whole thing. Uh, Claire? Is it possible that we're going to no, I'll never ask you to do a proof. Oh, okay. 
If you were a math major, I would highly suggest doing the proofs. If you are a computer science major, I suggest doing the proofs. Computer science majors will take a class called discrete structures. In, in that class, you learn how to prove things. Okay. I kind of think you should take discrete structures before linear algebra because you do a lot of proofs in linear algebra. I'm talking to the computer science majors. Okay. So I see that I have two fractions here. What do you know? So guess what? I can do keep change flip, right? It sounds like I'm dancing, but I'm really just doing some, some multiplication of fractions, right? Oh, but look at what cancels. Notice I get 0 over 0 here, right? So the x minus c's cancel. So I'm looking at the limit of f of x minus f of c over g of x minus g of c. But guess what? I know something about f of c. What is it? And I know something about g of c. It's 0, so I get f of x minus 0 over g of x minus 0. And then obviously we, we don't need to write the minus 0, right? I get the limit is x goes to c of f of x over g of x. And that's what I wanted, right? If you look at the whole thing, I've got the limit of the original functions now equals the limit of the derivative. Uh, what was the next homework problem we did? Let's just do one more, and then and then we got we got this right. It's easy, yes. Yes, yeah. So I had a square. Is that the one with the square root, Diego? Yes. Yeah. Give read read that one to me. The limit as x goes to sixteen. Beautiful. So we already know we get a zero over zero here, right? So that means we can apply a, a little, we can do a little hop. I can do a little hop here, right? Just take a little hop over to the derivatives. So, so I'm going to do the limit as x goes to 16 of 4 minus rad x prime. That's the easiest way to do it other than ddx, right? over 16x minus x squared prime. I'm going to do the derivative of both of those. I think the, the bottom one is easy. Do you agree? The bottom derivative is, is simple. I don't need to do anything on the side, right? This is the limit as x goes to 16 of something over 16 minus 2x. Let's make sure we're okay with that. Make sure we're okay with that. 16 minus 2x. Yes, we're okay with that? Is my is my denominator. So this is an mx plus b, so the slope is 16, right? This is an x squared, so the slope is 2x. The derivative is 2x, but I still have a negative outside, right? Derivatives are limits. I can ignore the coefficient. I can ignore the sign. Do the derivative of the power rule, and then bring that coefficient or that sign back in. Is everybody comfortable with that derivative of the denominator? going to be 58 degrees today. Can you believe that? So derivative of the upstairs, I got to do a little bit of work, right? So this is my side work here. I'm saying uh, uh, 4 minus square root of x prime is um, 4 minus x to the 1 half all prime. Yes? is 0 minus 1 half x to the to the 1 half minus 1. If, if I don't need to do that, if I can just go right to the minus 1 half, fine. I don't care if you skip steps like that, just don't make a mistake. So I get minus 1 half x to the minus 1 half. Negative exponent means reciprocal. Square root exponent means square, uh, sorry, one half power means square root. So now I'm going back to 
my limit, right? So this is my side work. I like to box it off. Whenever I can, I box things like Muhammad Ali. He did that in school too. Muhammad Ali was always boxing things in school. And then I get uh, negative one over square root of x here. I could simplify this. It doesn't do much if I do. So I'm, I'm going to be lazy on this one. And I'm just going to plug in. So I'm ready to plug in. I don't need to write the limit again, right? Negative 1 over 4 and then help me. Negative 16. So it's positive 1 over 1, 2, 8, right? Nope, sorry. What did I miss? Oh, I missed my 2. <laughs> I missed my 2. Sorry. There's a 2 here, right? Yeah. Yes, you're right. There's a 2 here. A 2 here. A 2 here. Thank you. Thank you. 128, right? All right. Easy. Yeah? Cool.